I can see that you've all got your microphones on mute, so that's fantastic. So we just ask that during the presentations, uh, you keep your microphones on mute. If you have questions, please do put them in the chat box for the end of the presentation. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining. We'll probably just wait one more minute to see if uh, anybody else is joining. There's a few people in the waiting room, so we'll just wait one more minute and then we'll get started. So thank you very much for coming, everybody. We're very excited about this series of academic lectures. Obviously, with the world having moved virtually, we're uh, able to do things like this every day for the next three weeks over a real range of subjects in universities. So we're very excited to be kicking this off. OK, I think that's everybody in from the waiting room. So I would like to say a really big thank you and welcome to Gladys Young from the University of Queensland and to Dr Joe from the University of Bath. So the subject of today's lecture is going to be engineering and we thought it'd be really interesting just to hear from two different sides. Of world. So Gladys Young is going to talk about engineering from the University of Queensland Australian point of view there and Dr Joe is going to talk about it from the UK point of view. So they're each going to have around 20 to talk about engineering and if you have any questions at any point do please just type them in the chat box and Ms Shazza will address those questions at the end. So firstly I'm going to pass over to Miss Gladys to talk about seriously what is engineering. Thank you very much Gladys. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Hello, looks good. Okay, all good. But we're seeing the yeah. seeing the ones with the notes and not just the slides. Oh, okay. Because it's automatically. How about like this? Good. Is it okay? Okay, I need to switch off my video so that I can share the screen properly. Yep, all good. Okay, all good. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to tell you a little bit more like what um, engineering is all about. Okay, so now, um, especially now during COVID-19, right, our, for future career in uncertain times. So um, we cannot predict the future, but um, we can prepare for it. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we can do um, to create this uh, positive change. So um, I have uh, a slide here to tell you a little bit more. For example, um, solving technical challenges in the in a challenging world. So you see, um, at the moment, you know, we have like health. There's something we have to do with health, you know, diagnose disease. There's energy, different sorts of energy available. Water, how are we going to access clean water to safeguard the planet? You know, we have water treatment around, you know, sometimes we have to, um, you know, recycle our water. And then of course we have our um, engineering information, like a little bit about technology, you know, cybersecurity, and of course we have our manufacturing and um, resources um, available at the moment. Okay, so what do engineers do? So they design, they build, they operate, they maintain. So we have computers, we have um, software running on them, we have automobile, for example, now we have our um, e electronic cars available as well, you know, we have our wind power um, available um, to um, provide electricity for all the household, we create and make new ways, you know, new material, 
you know, provide like um, earthquake warning system, you know, so that we can prepare ourselves, um, manufacture, you know, even with food, the packaging we use, you know, like the shoes we are wearing, all these are like involved with engineering. So I tell you a little bit more about what each of the engineering is about. So for chemical engineering, maybe a lot of students, the first thing they will be thinking about, oh, chemical engineering, oh, is it all about petroleum? Um, do I have to be out in the sun? So basically, you know, what chemical engineering in depth is more about like, you know, you, you can work in different industry for chemical engineering. For example, I have students they actually work in Tim Tam company. If you know about Tim Tam, it's our Australia famous um, chocolate biscuit cookies. So um, why, what do you think that like Tim Tam will be related to chemical engineering? Well, for example, you need to have um, designed a special packaging to keep the Tim Tam fresh. See, that's something to do with engineering. Um, we have students working with um, Arnott's company. Uh, we also do have students that actually work in cosmetic company, you know, like perfume, uh, your lipstick, all this is all related to, um, you know, chemical engineering as well. For civil engineering, although there is some explanation, you know, we talk about building bridges, you know, the road and transportation, these are all about civil engineering. Um, electrical engineering, now, you know, we talk about um, the green energy. Um, recently, um, UQ um, have um, a new solar farm. So you see, again, these are all the renewable energy that we are using. Uh, mechanical engineering is all about machinery. So, you know, you need to have a lot of machinery around, you know, to help to build the city as well. Like power station. And then we have mechatronic engineering is a little bit of everything, a little bit of um, electronic, a little bit of our IT, you know, we have our robotics going on, our um, artificial intelligence system, a little bit of everything for this program. Of course, mining, mining is a big thing um, in Australia and our uh, mining um, at the moment, like we have all the um, facility and, and all the, um, you know, machinery to help with our mining um, engineers, software engineering, of course, about IT, the biggest challenge, what we need to do with this software that is available for the engineers. Okay, again, there's a global demand for graduate engineers. So um, engineers is um, known for being a profession. So you see population growth, you need the infrastructure, globalization, uh, urbanization, for example, population has been growing, which means like, for example, in Australia, then, you know, you might have to, you know, um, cut down the trees, you know, to build a new town. And this is where you need all the civil engineers coming in to test on the soil. And then you have your mechanical engineers coming in with all the machinery. And then civil engineers, architecture, all build up the buildings. You need all the infrastructure to build the road, the transportation. Um, the building. So every one of the engineering uh, engineers are all required in this field. Okay, so there is an um, Engineers Australia report. For example, you see there's um, vacancy available for um, civil en engineers um, in this recent report, which is January to March 2020. So we need a lot of uh, infrastructure, you know, to, to uh, urbanize the city, you know, we want to build, uh, for example, in Australia, you know, we, we want to build a few uh, mega city in different region of the town in Australia. So what um, Australia employers are looking for? So all, all around, the, you know, you can travel, you know, sports, you know, you, you have voluntary jobs, you, you, you have been uh, joined in clubs and society, society, you know, you need a little bit of soft skill. It's other than, you know, knowing all the skills and knowledge of engineering, you know, you need a little bit of soft skill, how to work in a team, um, you know, um, how, to, how to do a presentation, how to speak well, you know, so all these things are belong to soft skills. So these are something that what an um, Australian employer look for other than your very high and top results. 
work experience. Yeah, you know, Australian employees are looking for work experience, but you need to start from somewhere. So this is where during this um, engineering, uh, while we study engineering, there will be uh, internship available for students. And this is where you get the opportunity to learn um, just before you graduate. Again, motivational feed, you need to have the right attitude as well. Diversity, so they're looking for different genders, you know, people from different nationality, you know, different kind of experience. Okay, enterprise skills, leadership skill, you need to have good communication, work well in a team, resilience. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit more about this professional practice. So um, in order to graduate in a Bachelor of Engineering, Honours program for in Australia is actually a four years program. Students need to fulfill a 450 hours of professional practice. So uh, over in UQ here, we have type A hours, which is all related to engineering environment. And then we have type B, where students can do um, a paid job outside of the engineering, or students, you know, can actually do some tutoring. If students is good in certain courses in UQ, you know, our professor will actually hire the students to be a tutor to assist with their particular course, or students will go through some study tour or leadership program. So all these things will add up to the hours on top of um, the type A hours. So this is where you gain your work experience, you know, before you actually graduate. So once you graduate, you'll be very confident, you know, to let your future employer know know that yes, I do have actually work experience or you are lucky enough like some of my international students during their internship, they actually um, got a job offer um, by their uh, internship company. So I, tell you, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the career um, advancement through. So if you want to go through um, this journey of engineering, so what are the courses you need to study? So recently, due to the high demand and you know the changing environment, we um, actually review our courses and we have six specialization. So um, in traditionally, there's only like six um, specialization students can choose. It's just like a chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, but at this point of time, it's actually not enough. It's not sufficient for students to do that. Students need to do a little bit more. So in chemical engineering, for example, you can see that students can actually select one of the major within the specialization. For example, if you have a close look, you can see that biomedical is across three different specialization. It's under chemical, electrical, and mechanical engineering. And you also can see that environmental, you want to be environmental engineers, it sits across chemical and civil engineering. And students have an option to choose a minor, which is com computer and uh, data science, which is actually very important now because this minor actually um, incorporate into the um, specialization and the majors as well. So this is something that students would like to study and then when they gain all this experience and knowledge, they will move on. Um, it will help them in future career. So in, in the engineering course, sometimes students, you know, as I mentioned, there's so many specialization, there's so many major to choose from. Students get confused. They really do not know where, where to start with. So there's always a flexible first year. Flexible first year is where students get to know um, a little bit of everything. There's different kind of project for students to choose from in the first year so that they can learn um, a little bit of each of the different kind of specialization. And in the second year, this is where they actually choose their specialization, choose their major or, or minor. And then of course, there's um, entry requirement for that as well. Very importantly would be students need to have um, the proper uh, mathematics and need to have either a physics or chemistry. So upon completion of the um, Bachelor of Engineering Honours, you know, students will be able to um, apply um, for Engineers Australia. They will be eligible for that, especially when they completed their 450 hours. 
So again, you can see there's a lot of career options um, available. Of course, um, students might be thinking, mm, can I actually choose two specialization? The answer is um, no, because it will be very challenging. So you will be able to only choose one specialization, for example, mechanical engineering. But at the same time, you can choose a specialization. You say, hmm, I'm interested in aerospace. Okay, I shall choose a Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering and then major in aerospace engineering. So I need, I would know a little bit more about aerospace. And of course we have our electrical engineering and software engineering. Okay, students do, during their uni time, yes, they need to fulfill their 450 hours, but where to go, who to look for, where do I get help? In, within our faculty, we have student and permeability team. They are there to assist students, especially with international students. For example, we have workshop like career start program. We have one-to-one -one consultation, you know, to assist students with their resume. Um, you know, we have mock interview for students. Um, we actually tell them uh, where to look for their internship. We work a lot with um, industrial partners. Um, they, they have this uh, agreement with us that they will actually hire our um, UQ students uh, for their internship um, purpose as well. And of course, you know, there's industry, industrial people will actually come along to UQ um, to do a like, presentation or site tour, or sometimes they participate in students' competition as a judge. Um, so they, they work very closely with students. Um, we also have a meet a mentor program. We have our previous alumni or industrial uh, partners that actually volunteer to be in this mentoring program. It's an optional program for students. So for example, students have chosen um, chemical engineering. So we will try to match students with a mentor with similar background. And this will help students um, to have um, a better and clearer understanding of the program they have studied and what eventually uh, will lead them to uh, further into their career. So these are some of our, of our industrial partner that we work very closely with. For example, we actually have a Boeing Research Center that sit within our faculty. So we work very closely with them. And we also have um, Siemens, uh, recently just joined UQ as one of our industrial research partner that sits within our faculty as well. So again, other than uh, what I mentioned to you with the professional skills and the uh, enterprise skills, there's a lot of uh, things that you can actually do to improve your skills. There's uh, UQ do offer summer and winter research. Um, UQ also do have global experience, uh, short-term studies. Uh, international students who study uh, in Australia get an opportunity um, to do internship overseas or um, to actually um, do like uh, one semester short-term program um, courses overseas. The only condition would be students is not allowed to go back to their home country for this experience. And then students will bring back the subject and we will provide credits for students. So there's a lot of things that students can actually work on. And we do have our UQ venture where we provide a lot of workshop and, and programs for students. Um, for example, we have this uh, startup academy to help students as well. Oh, I'm almost done. Okay, so in case you do not know uh, where we are, we are located in Queensland, and this is our beautiful city. Uh, this is our whole campus. Um, along the riverside, city is just 15 minutes away, and you can see all our engineering is building is just within this circle. So our mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, we also do have a um, engineering library that assists students and we have a permeability team within um, the buildings to assist students. Okay. These are all the schools that sit within our faculty, chemical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical mining, and we have our information technology and electrical engineering. Oh, our university actually promote women in engineering which is founded in 2013. So we educate female students, we support women studying engineering at UQ, we connect female graduates within the industry, we have 
a mentoring for female students. And you can see on the extreme um, right hand side, these are all the uh, company that actually do support our women in engineering and usually they will have uh, some spots available for female students to do internship within their company itself. I have a short video to show you. A future is full of unknowns, from climate change and population growth to making meaning from data sets bigger than we can imagine. We have complex challenges to solve, but the possibilities are limitless. I want to shape the world we live in, make it better for everyone. I'll need specialized knowledge and the ability to adapt in a world that's constantly changing. I'm honing my skills in cutting edge learning environments and getting hands on experience. With world leading teachers, entrepreneurs, and researchers, I'm supported to bring my ideas to life. The future is demanding and it's moving fast, but I'm ready to take it on. The University of Queensland, home of the unknown, preparing to discover more. Okay, so this is just a sharing for you. And then that's it. I quickly run through uh, a little bit about the engineering program. So um, if you have any questions, we will wait to um, the next presentation and then I will be available to answer your question. Thank you so much. Hopefully thank you I'm so much. Time. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Miss Gladys. That was a fantastic overview of engineering and a brilliant overview of the pathways they can do from that flexible first year all the way through to their specialization and careers. So that was a really yeah. fantastic overview. So if anybody has any questions for Miss Gladys, please do put them in the chat and uh, Miss Shazza will be oh, later. And you saw um, Miss Gladys's email there. So we'll be passing that on to everybody as well. So if you have a question tomorrow that you wish you'd ask, please do just contact Miss Gladys. Uh, so I'm very happy now to pass over to uh, Dr. Joseph Blint from the University of Bath to talk about engineering from a UK point of view. Hi, oh, thank you very much. Am I coming through clearly on the audio? Are indeed. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. Right, I'll just share my screen. Okay, can you see the slides? Fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, a huge thank you to all of you for joining us here today. It's really a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, my name's Dr. Joseph Flynn, but please do call me Joe. Uh, and I'm an academic in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Bath in the UK. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is what does engineering look like? And it's specifically what does engineering look like when you're studying it at the University of Bath? So let's start with Bath the City. Bath the City is one of the UK's most historic cities um, and it's located in the southwest of England. And it actually has a UNESCO World Heritage City status. So because of uh, its long history, so it's been uh, inhabited since before the Roman times, and because of its recognizable architecture, it's been awarded a UNESCO World Heritage City status. And it's famous in particular for its German architect, uh, Georgian architecture, and also the fact it has some Roman baths that you can still visit in the heart of the city center. It's also one of the safest cities in the UK. Um, and it's quite convenient because it's only 90 minutes from London, if you'd like to visit there, and only 15 minutes from another fantastic city called Bristol, which is only a short trip on the train. So let's cover what is engineering. What does Bath think engineering is? Well, we tend to divide engineering in a very, very similar way. So we divide it between four core disciplines. So we have mechanical engineering, electronic and electrical engineering, chemical engineering, and then architecture and civil engineering covering the built environment. Now, as I've mentioned, I'm an academic from the mechanical engineering department. So my talk is gonna focus quite heavily on that today. 
In short, engineering and mechanical engineering in particular is the application of mathematical and scientific concepts to create practical and useful things that benefit people. So almost everything that we eat, wear, use, and like to do has involved engineering at some point in the life cycle of those things, whether it be the development of the materials or the design of the mechanisms or the circuitry that make the item work. Perhaps most importantly, it's about improving the quality of life for our growing and aging population whilst remaining sustainable. So it's quite easy to think of engineering as being about nuts, bolts, oil and things like that. But actually, with the way the world is changing, it's so much more than that. And if, you are, if I asked you to remember one thing today, it really is that engineering is about improving the quality of people's lives in a sustainable way. So I have a short video here uh, that explains in more detail what mechanical engineering is all about. What is mechanical engineering? Mechanical engineering brings together creativity and design with maths and physics to analyse and test the limits of products, processes and technologies. But what does this really mean? It's developing new low emission forms of transport. It's advancing healthcare by developing medical devices to help us in old age. It's researching new materials to enhance the performance of existing and new products. It's inventing greener products and finding new ways to generate energy. Mechanical engineers are improving our quality of life. Are these things you want to achieve? You might become a mechanical engineer if you like, combining maths and physics, analyzing complex mechanical systems, undertaking practical tests and developing your ideas into usable products being an entrepreneur and combining engineering and business. Studying mechanical engineering involves learning theory in lectures, applying what you learn in practical lab sessions, solving issues in problem classes with your peers, exploring new technologies, making and testing new machines, working in teams to solve engineering challenges, investigating the social and environmental impact of mechanical engineering. By doing these things, you'll gain more than mechanical engineering theory. You'll have skills in critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, project management and business acumen. You can work in industries like product design, automotive and aerospace, healthcare and green technology, preparing you to make an impact on the world sustainably. Okay, so within the Department of Mechanical Engineering, we actually subdivide the theory that you're taught into the different disciplines that broadly map onto the different types of careers that you can follow. So in our department, we have aerospace engineering, automotive, pure mechanical, which is perhaps the broadest. You take uh, theory from lots of different disciplines in that. We also have integrated design engineering, which is the combination of uh, electronics, uh, software engineering and design engineering to make the products of the future. And then we also have a manufacturing and management scheme. So no matter what happens in the world, we will always need to make things. And therefore, having a manufacturing and management unit is really important for creating the engineers that the, the world is going to need for the future. So it doesn't matter which discipline you follow. Uh, studying at Bath means that you're going to get a master's in engineering. So our standard degree package is a four year master's, undergraduate master's. And this will give you an in-depth study experience through taught units and project work. Um, all of our MNG units fulfill the educational requirements that you would need to become what's called a chartered engineer. So this is a professional uh, achievement, a professional qualification that is a recognition of your engineering competency and you would need an accredited degree at the master's level to become a chartered engineer. For those that decide they don't want to stay for the full four years, there is an option to transfer to a bachelor's in engineering, which is a three-year program, but that is something you do have to opt into. So when you come to Bath, you are automatically enrolled on the four-year program. 
So what would it take to actually get to the University of Bath? Well, this is quite a complicated question and it varies depending on which educational background you've come from and the type of qualifications that you've done. But to give you an idea, our typical offer would be for A star AA, including maths and physics and an A star in maths or physics. So if you were doing the A level route, this is what the typical offer would be. Alternative offers can be made based on you undertaking other enriching activities. So if you've had experience of an EPQ or you've taken, for example, a highly relevant qualification such as further mathematics at AS level or perhaps even a fourth A level, these are things that can be taken into consideration on a case by case basis as part of your application and the offer can change slightly. So if you're taking qualifications that are outside of the A-level stream, I think the best advice that I can give you is to go to our university website because the entry requirements do change and they can be very specific depending on uh, which qualifications you've taken, but all of the information is available. And I can give you a, a link to a website at the end of this talk. You can see from the first bullet point that we only specify maths and physics formally which means that you do have quite a high degree of choice for your, your third A-level if you're following the A-level stream. And our advice here would be either follow something that's relevant, so something like product design or further maths, so clearly relevant to the engineering discipline. But if you want to do something else to broaden your studying horizons, then perhaps follow a traditional subject like history or geography or something like that. So this diagram, gives an indication of the structure of the course that you would undertake once you arrive at the University of Bath. So if I just switch my uh, laser pointer on, the first two years of your study are common to all of the mechanical engineering disciplines, be it aerospace, automotive, or integrated design engineering. So what we think of the first two years as being is the essential foundation that we think all engineers should have in terms of knowledge and skill sets. So it doesn't matter what you're studying uh, within the mechanical engineering department, you will be taking the same units in these first two years. Now, the reason for that is because quite often people arrive and they don't actually know which bits of engineering interest them. And so what we do is we give them a broad overview of all of the necessary uh, engineering theory. And at that point, students start to recognize where their talents are. Perhaps they're very good at fluid mechanics or thermodynamics. Perhaps they much prefer the design avenue. So once they've had their first two core years of uh, theory and laboratory work, there's then the option to go on an industrial placement. So that happens between the second and third year of your study, and it lasts a whole year. And I'm going to talk about that in more detail in a few slides time. If you go straight from second year or if you're returning from your industrial placement, then start to customize your degree. So at this point, so after your placement, or if you don't go on a placement at the end of the second year, you'd then be required to specify which discipline you would like to follow. So that might be aerospace, automotive, pure mechanical, manufacturing or design. And at that point, you're going to start receiving specialist modules that tailor specifically to the requirements of those sectors. That's what what happens in semester one of third year, then in semester two, you join forces with uh, about five other students to form a group of six and you do what we call the group design and business project. So this is a semester long project where companies uh, come to the university and present design challenges and the students have to not only design a technical solution to that challenge, but also a business solution to that challenge. So entrepreneurship and business acumen are a core part of our syllabus at Bath. For those that don't fancy the group project, they can actually take a further semester in industry. And that's what this EIP is called, is for. So if you have a particularly good relationship with a company or you want to get more industrial experience, here's an opportunity for you. If you transferred onto the three year course, you would be graduating at this point. But most students, the vast majority of students continue to the fourth year. And this is where you get to really customize your degree. You'll be taking optional modules from a pool of many, many uh, different subjects, and you can really pick and choose the things that interest you. That's in semester one. And then semester two, you have another semester long project, but this time as an individual. So you would be working very closely with somebody like me on a one to one basis, 
perhaps in the laboratory, uh, facilitating some research or uh, developing a new product or prototype. And you would then write that up as part of your final year project. So in years one and two, what sort of thing would you be looking at? Well, broadly speaking, you'd be looking at mathematics and computing and the strong relationship that exists between those two. Some things are easily solved with a pencil and paper. Other things need a computer model to solve them. You'd then be looking at solid mechanics as well, which is how uh, structures perform under loading and stress. Thermodynamics and fluid mechanics really do go hand in hand for looking at things like heat transfer and gas turbine propulsion and things like that. There's always a strong thread of design materials and manufacturing at Bath. In fact, Bath was founded on the principles that there should be lots of design materials and manufacturing work. So there are these practical and creative elements right the way through. And we don't believe in students spending all of their time in the lecture theatre either. So there's plenty of experimental and engineering skills work to be done either in the workshop or in a laboratory. Finally, with the way the world is going, it's very rare to have a mechanical system that is purely mechanical. There's almost always some element of electronics or control in that system. And that's what the instrumentation theory will be for, is to give you a grounding in the principles of electronics and control. Uh, and this is really helpful as you go out into your future careers because we need engineers that can speak both of those languages. So many things are now mechatronic in their, in their manner and it's really a very important skill. So on average you would have about 22 to 25 contact hours per week and what that means is uh, lecture theatre work, uh, tutorial sessions where you're going through um, problem sheets and coursework but also laboratory and workshop sessions. So about 15 to 17 of those hours would be made up of lectures and tutorials, leaving the rest for hands-on engineering application. So whilst you're studying in a lecture theatre, it will look much like this. Here's one of our lecture theatres at University of Bath that can hold you know, roughly 250 to 300 people. And it's easy to imagine that this is all you do at university. And that's actually a misconception. Um, this is certainly how you spend some of your time and it's a very important part of your education. But actually, we really like to see students in the workshop. So we have the student model shop at the University of Bath. Now this is a dedicated workshop, it's one of many, but the difference with this workshop is it is only for you as students. I have no privilege or access to that laboratory. It's not for me, it's for you. And this you can use to complete your projects. You can also use it for personal interests as well. If you have a hobby uh, that you'd like to explore more and it requires you to manufacture things, there are staff on site to help you develop your skills with these pieces of manufacturing technology. You'll also spend a lot of time in the laboratory, as I've mentioned, and that will be broadly covering the aspects of design and build. So how do we actually take something out of the computer or off the page and bring it into the real world accurately and reliably? Uh, you'll be disassembling complex engineering systems such as engines, and then also doing some laboratories that support the theory that you've been granted, sort of given in the lectures. So something is given to you as a principle, and then you go and apply that principle with a dedicated uh, experimental rig in a laboratory. A big and, and very important theme at the University of Bath is industrial training. And we are probably proud of this, uh, you know, as much as anything else within our degree program. And what, it, what we do to sort of celebrate this is give all of our students the opportunity to go on a year long paid placement. So it's an opportunity to work alongside uh, practitioners, so professional engineers, and to benefit from their knowledge. So to learn from their experience and to understand what it's like to actually operate as a professional engineer. And so people develop their practical skills, but also their professional skills in this regard. And this is something that can definitely count towards becoming a chartered engineer in the future.
So we're very fortunate in where we're situated in Bath because we're close to one of the biggest engineering centres in the country, which is in the southwest near Bristol. And as a result of that, we have strong links with a, a whole host of companies. And this is just a sampling, um, but we regularly send students to these companies here uh, to spend a year paid working within one of their engineering divisions. So strong links with aerospace and automotive, but also healthcare and sports technologies as well. So I have a short video here uh, just to show us um, what some students think about going on placement. So when I was younger, my granddad had a, a workshop in his garage. I used to love building things with him and that's really what sparked my fascination in design and, and building. I'm Felix O'Keefe, I'm studying mechanical engineering and I chose to do my placement year at Crux Product Design based in Bristol. They're a design consultancy. I chose to work at Crux because I had previous placement experiences working for large companies. And although I appreciated the work that they were doing, I wanted to work for a smaller company whilst I was on placement. In particular, I chose Crux because the work they're doing is interesting design, it's very mechanical, and there's a huge opportunity to work with clients. There's always a challenge in the design, and usually it starts with brainstorming as a team, maybe five or six people. And then you'll go away, you'll take that problem and try and develop it. Being allowed to sit in on those meetings and actually presenting your own work, it's not often an opportunity you get. I suppose it's really rewarding actually seeing the work that you've done being appreciated. One of the benefits of working at Crux was as a smaller company, I can be the designer, but then also the next morning I'll be building it. So I've been able to develop my CAD skills um, and that's going to be a huge thing coming back to university. I was able to really spend a good sort of amount of time training myself and that was a great learning experience for me. Looking back over my placement, I've gained a lot of confidence. It's really confirmed to me that after university, I want to go on and work at a design consultancy where you can design, make, test and validate different projects all the way from the start to the finish. Right, so I'm conscious that we're, we're getting towards the end of the time here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip quickly through this slide and all this slide is really saying that about uh, 60 to 75% of our students do go on placement. And of those that do, almost all of them would end it or they've had a positive experience. So it's a, it's a very enriching thing. And I would encourage you all to think about whether or not you'd like to do a place in industry. Now, year three, as I've mentioned, is made up of specialist modules to your degree discipline. But it's also made up of a group design and business project, which is uh, usually one of the best bits. But I think students would say this is one of the most enjoyable parts of their degree, working with their colleagues on a real world problem to find not only a technical, but also a business solution to that problem. And you can really take your time and go into the detail and enjoy what you're doing with that project. So it's a very rewarding part of the program. Um, and there are lots of things that you can do. Now, I had uh, some videos to show you, uh, perhaps three videos, um, depending on the type of work, your type of degree you're doing. So if you're doing an aerospace degree, then chances are your group design and business project would require you to design an aircraft. So here is an entire aircraft designed by a group of our students here and supervised by industry from the aerospace sector. Um, and some of that, develops into, this is my last video, I promise.
I will skip the next few videos, but if anybody would like to learn more about how some of the project work gets brought to life and how it fits into the framework of our competition teams, which is a really big thing at Bath, um, I'm very happy to talk about that offline. But for now, I will leave you with a barcode um, that you can use and also a link that you can use if you're interested in getting any more information at all about engineering at Bath. Uh, I'm, I'm conscious I need to finish so that it's fair for you to ask questions and you have plenty of time. So if you'd like to take a picture of this slide, please do. I think this is being recorded. So I'm going to hand back now uh, and end my talk there, but it's been lovely to, to chat with you. Thank you very much, Dr. Joe. Um, that was a fantastic overview at Engineering at Bath. And I loved all the little videos. So I'm sure we have uh, parents and students out there who really like to watch them. So please do uh, scan this uh, barcode that we see up there and uh, to be able to watch those. And again, the same as uh, Miss Gladys, we're providing you with both of their email addresses for you to contact them. And I'm sure there's plenty of information on the Bath website and the University of Queensland website. So thank you once again to our fantastic speakers, Miss Gladys and Dr. Joe. And I'm going to pass over to Miss Shazza now to read out any questions that there have been in the chat. So this is your chance to ask any questions you have for these two fantastic speakers and uh, to get all your queries answered. So I'm going to pass over to Miss Shazza now. Yep. Thank you to Miss Gladys and Dr. Joe for that fantastic uh insight in about engineering and the different kind. Uh, I was not an engineering student, but it was very, very interesting to hear all the different uh, opportunities available. So we do get some uh, questions coming from uh, uh, the chat. Uh, most of them were sent privately to me, so I'm going to read them all out. I think the first question would probably be for Ms. Gladys or Ms. Chai Yang. Uh, Yen, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the question is, uh, how easy or like how easy is it for Malaysian nationals uh, after they do a degree uh, in engineering in Australia to be able to work uh, and get a work visa in Australia after their graduation? Mm. Why you want to answer about the postgraduate visa thing? Okay, um, what I do um, is that in Australia, if you study minimum two years undergraduate in Australia, um, students can apply for a whole work study visa to remain in Australia to get a job. So of course, uh, we are talking about employability is very important at what point the university start to connect you. That's why at UQ, we have a lot of different platform connecting students through the, uh, uh, with the peers through like our UQ uh, employability award, the 450 hours work experience that is required to complete the degree, the meet and mentor in the final year. All these are different example platform that you can use to stay connected uh, before you graduate. So that is where uh, at UQ, our UQ employability uh, rate in Australia is normally two to 3% higher than the national employment rate. So that is where actually uh, we train our students. And of course, students have, uh, as a research uh, number one university in Australia, we have a lot of projects going on uh, in terms of like, governments, organization, things like that. So this student, we have the opportunity to do work projects on research, you know, things like that. Even like we have very high tech, high, uh, hypersonic uh, research center, things like that. So students have all this opportunity to actually um, participate in you know, project based uh, with the researcher. That is where also, again, you stay connected. And when you graduate out, we hope that all this connection, the dots that we actually uh, connect you, that help you to set you apart, you know, when you graduate, you will be able to find jobs, you know, um, or because some of the your mentor or some of your uh, uh, employers previously uh, for your internship models, you become your referees, um, you know, uh, or, or they can recommend you for position in their companies. Yeah. Hmm. I can add up a little bit for our engineering students. I do come across some students that um, who decided to stay on to Australia and because they have been doing such a wonderful job during their internship um, period with a um, certain company, um, they actually uh, got a job offer. Some of them even got a job offer before they graduate. So um, this opportunity available, just that um, stu students, um, you know, have to be very active um, in, in asking for assistance and help. Um, I do have um, students that um, after, um, even after their two years, of studying uh, with the graduate visa, right? Um, the company even offer them 
to stay even longer. So there's actually um, opportunity available for students. Or likewise, you know, with our um, UQ degree students can easily go back to Malaysia. We have a very large number of UQ uh, engineering uh, alumni who is now um, living in Australia, uh, living in Malaysia and, and working uh, what, in uh, anywhere part in the world as well. So there's opportunity available for students. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, the next two questions will be uh, for Dr. Joe. Uh, the first one will be how, like, what do you see the future of aerospace engineering uh, considering COVID and travel and everything that is going on around the world? Uh, where do you see aerospace engineering in particular going forward in the future? So, the COVID situation has been incredibly challenging for a number of businesses and with the hit to, to transport, obviously the aerospace sector has suffered a blow, but um, I do strongly believe that it will recover very strongly. Um, the, the order books within aerospace firms tend to be not just for the current year, but actually for several decades into the future. Um, so although this is a temporary challenge. I think they're going to recover strongly. But in terms of technology, the major focus is on creating cleaner skies. And what that really means, technologically speaking, is the use of electrification on onboard aircraft. So at the moment, we use uh, you know, jet fuel, which is not, not particularly great for the environment. And what they're looking for is how to use smaller and more distributed power systems, uh, mostly driven by electric technology in the future aircraft um, concepts. So were you to be a mechanical engineer, having an appreciation of things like electric motors and battery technology is, is really important. And we certainly have um, units and activities that cater to that. So for example, we have a student electric race car team that competes all over the world and you can get involved with that. We also have an electric um, motorbike team and all you have to do is turn up, introduce yourself and say, I'm really interested in this, I wanna join. And so we're trying to move a lot of our activities towards this electrification of transport. It started in cars, it's almost certainly going to happen in aircraft as well. So I think that's one to watch for the future. Okay, and the next question, uh, this is really got to the workshop and the, uh, the student rooms that you say that students have access to use and everything. What kind of level of freedom do they have to access these uh, places? Can they go anytime they want, even in the middle of the night, if they have a sudden burst of inspiration, or is there like limited times that they can use them? Well, it depends on the facility. So the library at the university is open 24-7, so you can go literally anytime you like. Uh, the study rooms within the department and the computer rooms tend to be open uh, pretty much all day, every day, but they do close for a period overnight. I think it's about midnight they close them. However, if there's a reason that they need to be kept open, then we have flexibility to allow students to work in there. Now, the workshops, they're a little bit more dangerous. You know, there's machinery that needs to be operated very carefully, and usually we say that can only be operated within strict working hours so there would need to be a technician who's health and safety trained on site to supervise that work if you get involved in one of the competition teams some of that relaxes because you get much more training on how to use the equipment safely so if you were working on say the drones like i showed the video of uh, they have their own workshop with their own tools and they're responsible for their own health and safety so they actually are allowed to work much later into the evening, giving them a lot of flexibility. Okay, thank you for that answer. Uh, I think the next one will probably be for, be for both of you. Uh, someone is asking about how often is it for students to be able to get internship or placement during their studies? What are the possibility of that probability of people getting on onto those internships and placements? Does Queensland want to go first? <laughs> you go first then. Okay, are you sure? Right, yeah. well, in terms of what the university would actually facilitate you with, so we have a dedicated internship team, it has five members, and they focus on getting people 
the year long placement that's between the second and the third year. But actually what tends to happen is our students find their own placements in the summers between years. So I have known students, quite a few students who have had placements every single summer and also the year long placement between years two and three. But in terms of formal support, um, the placements team are focusing on that big year long placement. But that being said, I'm sure you could go and knock on their door and they would help you find a placement for, for the summer as well. Okay, for UQ wise, um, just now I did uh, introduce our employability team. So um, our team will be there to assist students. So um, students will be studying four years at the UQ with us. Um, usually we do not recommend students um, to go into the first year because first year they're still um, exploring, um, you know, the engineering program, like whether which um, specialization they want to choose. But however, we usually encourage students um, to start looking for internship to go and meet up with our employmentability team around uh, second half of the year because they have would have already selected their specialization and they already know uh, a little bit more in depth and have studied um, relevant um, you know foundation um, courses for that is required for the engineering and then they go to our employmentability team. We do have workshop. Um, available for students to assist them um, to for their resume and, and and their mock interview. At the same time, we have industrial partners uh, coming in to our university as well. Um, we do have a number of industrial partners that sit within UQ, so students also get an opportunity. For example, Boeing, Siemens, uh, all sit within um, our faculty. And we also um, offer like um, connection with students with LinkedIn. Uh, we do have different meet the mentor function, the engineer, uh, engineering like a uh, morning tea or even dinner function for students to, um, uh, no obligation optional for students to actually to attend so that they get an opportunity to meet up with potential uh, um, internship um, companies. So this is where they get, um, till now, Almost all our students will be able to get an um, internship opportunity. If they don't, they can always uh, go and look for our employability team, go and look for their um, academic. Uh, they will always be there to further assist students, um, especially if this is actually part of their requirement. Okay. Thank you. Hope I've answered the question. Thank you very much. And uh, we've come to time now, so it's six o'clock. So thank you so much, Miss Gladys and Dr. Joe. For really insightful overviews of engineering and it's a bit of a view on opposite sides of the world and uh, we're aware that we haven't quite got through all the questions so we will send you an FAQ if you registered for this event we'll be able to send that through email and obviously please do uh, contact both Dr Joe and Miss Gladys if you have any questions so we'll be providing the email addresses as well again if you think of a question tomorrow it's always useful to have that that detail so Thank you once again to Dr. Joe from Bath University and Miss Gladys from University of Queensland. Thank you so much for coming and thank you parents and students for attending our virtual lecture series. And we hope to see you at some of the other lectures we have over this coming three weeks. So thank you so much, everybody. And thank you for attending. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I should probably stop recording.